Hi everybody, this is going to be a very short video dealing with a slightly more advanced topic in uh, the usage of generate and replace in Stata. Right? So we're going to deal with how do we collapse a variable, say with five categories or seven categories, down to a similar variable with, say, three categories without losing all of our information. How do we make, how do we collapse a variable down in a way that makes sense? Right? So I've loaded some data already. This is a sample of observations from the 2018 General Social Survey, about 200 observations or so. And I have in it, in this data, a variable called conschools, which is what I want to focus on today. Right? Confidence in schools and the education system. So to begin with, let's get a look at it. So let's run tabulate schools and I can see that it is a variable with five categories the fairly you know looks like a bell curve shaped spread across them and where one is complete confidence in schools two is a great deal three is some four is very little five is no confidence at all right? so I might look at these two people who have no confidence at all in the schools and wonder how different they are from the people who have very little confidence right I may think that these people in these two rows should be grouped together. And I might similarly think that the people with a great deal and, and complete confidence should, should be grouped together. Right? Maybe I want this on a three-point scale that still maintains the same ordinal quality. Right? Maybe I want it to look like, let's compare it to confidence in television, maybe I want it to look like this. Right? Maybe I want it to be a variable that I could compare to, say, confidence in television in a way that made some sense. Okay. As a side note, right, because the survey respondents who were dealing with the survey didn't actually answer the question on this scale for schools for some reason, which I'm not completely sure why, um, we can't, like, directly compare them, right? We can't be really, really um, forceful in our comparisons, but we can you know, with the proper caveats, make a comparison if we can get this variable down into the same general scale. All right, so how do we how do we collapse confidence in schools down into a three-point variable? Well, first thing we want to do is, is create a blank variable. So I'm going to use generate, and I'm going to, I'm going to call my new variable um, conschools three because it has three categories equals dot right remember that we can fill a variable with blank data as sort of a safety measure to begin with okay. so now we have a blank variable called call schools three we need to start filling it up so replace con schools three equals one so this should be familiar if you um, watch the generate video, the video on generate and replace, um, we're going to basically fill this variable with ones on, on a certain condition. So it's going to be if. So the issue that we're going to get into is we need two situations where you wind up with ones, right? It's these two specific situations, right? So one way we can specify these is by calling each of them out and using an OR operator. Right? So th that's really our topic for today, sort of a, a usage of the OR operator. And this is a particularly common situation to use it. So we would say, you know, if con schools, we're going to replace our con schools with a one, if con schools equals equals one, OR, right? and that's this bar, con schools equals equals two. So we see we have 31 changes. So Stata went through it, grabbed these seven people and gave them a one in our new variable and grabbed these 24 people and also gave them a one. Okay. Now we need to do the same thing for our second category, which is just value three, and our third category, which is value four and five. So rather than type this command out again, I'm just going to hit page up to grab it, to replace it. 
and I'm going to switch the value that I'm dealing with to 2. And I'm going to get rid of my if statement. Or my second if, my second if statement, because I don't need it. I don't need the first one. Um, I need to replace this to 3. Run that line. And I see I have 40 changes to go along with my 40 changes, or 40 um, people who had some confidence. Right? So these are now my the equivalent of my only sum category. So now I will hit page up two times because I, I, I know I'm going to want two if statements. Right? I need two conditions. So I'm going to grab that line that I had with two conditions, replace the one with a three, and replace these with four and five. Right? So I'm going to give this variable a value of three if the value of my five point scale variable is four or five. So if it's here or here. So let's run that line. We have 14 changes, so 12 changes here, 2 changes here. We, don't, we shouldn't have errors. So now we can tabulate that our new variable. And we see we now we have a variable with three categories, 31, 40, and 14 respectively, that we can now compare to, say, confidence in television. So the logic of this sort of conditional if statement, right? the sort of thing we use to collapse variables. Um, we can also use it in other contexts. Right? These um, you know, expanded if statements. Right? If, if some variable takes any number of values. Right? We can also use it to... Um, we can use this to generate um, variables for, say, specific racial categories, um, right? Where you know the numbers don't line up next to each other, right? So we'll, for this variable in particular, what we could have done is we could have replaced this conditional if statement here with um, confidence in schools less than or equal to two, right? That would have grabbed these as well. But if we were in a situation right, where, we're, where we wanted this category here and this category here, for some reason, to have, a val have the same value, then, then you would need to use this bar. Right? You wouldn't be able to do it really any other way. I mean, I suppose the other way you could do it is to have a separate line for each one of these. But sometimes we really want to do it in one command. Sometimes we need to do it in one command. And probably the single biggest situation where we need to do it in one command is when we need to restrict the population of observations that one of our analysis, one of our analyses is operating on, right? If I need to restrict my sample down from, say, the entire sample to a subset, right? Let's say I only want to run um, a an analysis that I have on subjects with a, with particular educational backgrounds. Well, then say I'm running a regression, so I might have you know a command regress. And I'm not going to actually write something with thing. I might say I might regress x on y if education equals equals four or education equals equals six or something like that, right? Where if you have a bunch of categories like this. All right, so that is all I have for today. I hope this was helpful to you in your state of work, in your playing around, or whatever you're using these videos for. All right, take care.